Everybody, I love doing those intros. I have no idea why. It just gets me uh, in another place so that I can actually record. It gets the creative juices flowing. So I hope that people don't mind that. Um, but today's vlog is, can you be friends with your ex? Is it healthy for you to be friends with your ex? Do you want to be friends with your ex? So before I get started, it's been a long time since I've issued a disclaimer, but I feel like I need to issue one for this particular vlog. And that is, I am not a counselor, a therapist. I am not someone that gets paid to listen to or give advice. I am just a woman who has had a myriad of experiences and it continuing on the evolutionary journey. And these are my thoughts, my thoughts perceptions and my experiences and they may or may not jive with what you think and that's cool but hopefully you will get some insight and you will take some nuggets from it so here we go um as you guys know um a couple of years ago i went through a really 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 painful breakup and i vlogged about that as a matter of fact that's how i started vlogging because i went through this breakup and i wanted to put some information out there for other people since then i have you know been able to step back to kind of take a deep breath i've seen and identified some areas where i may have contributed to the demise of our relationship i'm not assuming responsibility totally for the ending of the relationship but i do think that we all play a part in something that it's not always um, just a one side, a one sided kind of thing. And, you know, it, it may even be 95, 5 percent, but you still bear some responsibility in whatever went on at some point. So um, I do accept some responsibility for some things that, you know, I contributed to the ending of that relationship or how it ended. And um, that really allowed me to forgive and to move on and, you know, to kind of just put my life back together and, you know, kind of see it in a different perspective that this event, while painful and on a lot of levels traumatic, really gave me some insight, not only into relationships and how I want them to look futuristically, but into myself and, you know, into how I engage with, uh, with men and, you know, what my perceptions are and, you know, what I would do if I'm ever fortunate to be in another relationship, which I'm really hoping that I will be, but if I'm ever in another relationship, I want to take a lot of care and caution not to repeat some of those mistakes. But that is not what this vlog is about. So, one of the things that I always said about my previous relationship was that part of the pain of going through that and part of the trauma, at least for me, was because this man was my best friend. Like, I... I have sister friends, don't get me wrong. I have girlfriends that I love to infinity and I would I would hurt you over them. I really would. But there was something about having this man in my life who was my best friend, who spoke to me on a completely different level, who had insight into me as a woman from a male perspective that was able to balance me, balance all my crazy, help me, you know, like I always tell y'all, just bring it, just bring in the crazy. Just bring it in a little bit because if you don't want it out there just unleashing on everybody. And he did that for me. He was able to give me certain insight and, and certain um, uh, pointers that other people really didn't see because he saw me in a different light. You know, not only was he, you know, the love of my life and, you know, of course, my my intimate relationship but just my friend and like I it took me a long time after we broke up to really mourn that part of the relationship because more than anything more than the, the romanticism and more than um being in a relationship with him as you know being his being his significant other I missed my friend like things would happen in my life and I would look for the phone and remember oh 
I can't call him. Or, you know, things would happen with one of my children and I just wanted to bounce some things off of him. And I don't have brothers and I don't have uncles. So really, he was my go-to person as far as, as malehood or manhood and, you know, really giving me some balance and some insight. And I do have some wonderful male friends who have always been around and who have stepped in. But, like, this was my, my guy. And so... You know, I would call and, you know, let me run this by you. What do you think about this, that, and the third? And I didn't have that anymore. And it was so incredibly painful. And so, you know, I really, because of that, that was why I was really reluctant to close the door fully on that relationship because I really missed the friendship. And I was really hoping that at some point in life where, you know, we got past the, you know, what was done to each other, what I did to him, what he did to me, because I think that that's a lot of perception. You know, I clearly have some ideas of what happened and he doesn't recall it that way and vice versa. Um, I wanted to be able to say, if we could at least have a semblance of friendship, I would be agreeable to that. Now, here's the odd thing. I've never done that before, ever in life. Like seriously, if, if I end a relationship now, y'all know, as I told y'all, I've not had a whole lot of relationships, so I can't even pretend like it's this long list of ex-boyfriends that I just don't speak to anymore. That's not the case at all. But generally speaking, by the time a relationship that I'm in is over, I don't really feel the need to talk to you. And because things ended so poorly with my ex-husband, like, yeah, I'm good. We don't have to talk ever. We good with that. But... With this guy, it was very different because I felt like we established this friendship. So I was really reluctant to let that go. And I wanted to leave just a little bit of opening in case he came to his senses. <laughs> he decided he wanted to resume at least the friendship portion. And so, you know, that got me to thinking. I'm, you know, wonder if if that's healthy, you know, of course, because I do a lot of introspection. And I think that the key to that is not to go from being in this this relationship in this intimate relationship and then default to friendship right away i do think that there needs to be a separation i think that there needs to be a break i think that both parties have to process in some kind of way on their own without influence from the other i do think that there has to be some sense of closure however you get it and I, and ladies i tell y'all all the time that closure doesn't always come the way that you imagine or the way that you expect it and so sometimes somebody not talking to you somebody you know not returning your phone call somebody just completely cutting you off and giving you the silent treatment that's about as much closure as you're going to get because that person does not want to be bothered with you at least not in, at, at that point and so you have to find another way to just really process that and let it go. It just is not meant. It, it just isn't meant to be. And it's not always that it's not meant to be forever. It's just not meant to be in that moment, in the, in the form that it is now. So meaning, it may not be meant to be now in 2017 as a significant other, but it may be meant to be in 2019 as just a friendship when you're both in a different place, when you're both you know, more mature, hopefully, when you both have been able to reasonably process what happened, when you both have been able to do some life work and, you know, really, really get to a place where you're healed and you're whole and you're not holding on to all of that, that shame or all of that disappointment or all of that hurt or all of that, whatever the, the negative, um, emotion is you have to be able to let that go and that takes a fair amount of work and a fair amount of healing that's why i think that the time of separation is so important because you that influence when you constantly are seeing someone or talking to someone and you are desperately in love with them that's how fatal attractions get started that's how you know this unnatural and unhealthy attachments get kind of solidified because you never are able to let go so you know I, I in in my th in my thoughts in my evolutionary process i really do think that it's possible for you to remain friends with your ex but i do think that there has to be a time of development and growth and maturity and all of those kinds of things before that that can that can successfully happen and i think that the longer that you're in a, a coupled relationship 
the longer it will take for you to extract that. Now, if you were, you know, friends before you started dating and then you guys just tried to see and maybe for a year and, you know, y'all kicked it real hard and, you know, decided that, no, nah, we're just better off as friends. That's different. I'm talking about people who have, you know, seriously put their all into a relationship, seriously put, you know, everything that they have into a relationship only to watch it fall apart. And um, I think it becomes a lot harder if you had no relationship before that. I think it, it may be a little bit easier to kind of default to the friendship level if you were friends to begin with, you know, like y'all just tried it and no, you know, we're better off as friends and, you know, you just kind of put it back in its place. You know, it's a little bit more difficult if you met as a romantic interest or, you know, you kind of grew to that, you know, that, that natural outgrowth, outgrowth or that organic kind of, of um, destination or outcome because you guys were attracted to each other, you had a lot of synergy, you know, you, you know, fired on every cylinder and, you know, then you decided that you were going to be intimate partners, either physically or emotionally. And, you know, it just didn't pan out. I think that that kind of separation is, is even more difficult to navigate and um, giving your time, giving yourself a time of separation to really be introspective. You know, I think, and I'm going to say this again, I'm really against rebound relationships because that, first of all, that's a placebo. That's number one. Number two, that person's whole job is to help you get over the last fool. And, you know, I think it's unfair. It's grossly unfair to that person, especially if they have no idea that they are the placebo or the rebound guy. Um, and it's unfair to you because you're not allowing yourself to process and not allowing yourself to feel and not allowing yourself to really, really heal the way that you need to. And that's how you wind up having an exterior that looks like it's whole and put together, but you got just enough pressure point that if somebody leans and applies pressure to that, you just are one big hurt all over again. So, you know, I definitely don't recommend re rebound relationships, um, but a time where you can just really function and think about it. But yeah, I do think that you can be friends with your ex and, you know, just, you can leave the door open, but guard the door. How about that? If you have any comments, leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will catch y'all later on.